Welcome back everyone. I'm going to show you a little leech imitation. It's a very common imitation. It's not my pattern. It's been tied quite a few times by many different tires. Um, I'm tying it for largemouth yellowfish. Um, not only largemouth yellowfish but also uh, bass, smallmouth bass, largemouth bass anything that, that feeds on quite a big bait or prey and it's a, a, a pattern and it's a typical stream pattern and works well for large brown trout as well and I'm tying it on a grip 30012 hook which is the bass almost like a bass stinger hook and uh, I'm tying it in size 10. I I've I've tied, do tie them in larger sizes, like size 8s and 6s. But I, for what I need them, I prefer the size 10s. And I tie them with a weed guard. Now, I use about a 60 pound monofilament. I use a 3.0 thread. And tie the I will stick the monofilament through the vise behind the hook. We've got better control of it. It sits on top of the hook nicely. And you tie it in, leaving a gap between the cone and the uh, and the monofilament because you're going to be tying other material in there as well. You need to leave that space. Now I always start by trapping it with a few wraps and then I just add a little bit of a, a resin or glue or something just to to keep it in place and to help bind everything in the um, you know under the thread because it's quite a quite a big fly I always find that a little bit of resin helps to keep everything in place and you just wrap that all the way down the shank, keep it on top of the shank so that is quite important and down the shank or down the bend sort of not too far down the bend but just far enough that it won't slip past the bend when you tie it down the front so you go about halfway down the bend and then back up all the wraps next to each other to about there now the next thing we're going to tie in is another piece of monofilament and this for this I use a slightly heavier monofilament I use an 80 pound and this is for the rack guard which will help to prevent the tail because it's a zonka tail which is kind of a soft material prevent that from from wrapping around the um, hook. Now I always cut the the end of the monofilament at an angle and when I measure it you don't want to tie that all the way down the, the bend but you want it to sit or, or down the shank but you want it to sit just at the back with a loop go just past the bend of the hook. Measure that and then you cut the other end and also cut that end at a bit of an angle it just helps to 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 uh, get that thread come off the monofilament a little bit easier and smoother and then tie that the one end in on the far side And you don't go down the bend with this. Again, hold it there with a few wraps and then secure it with, or just add a bit of glue rather, glue or resin, and just to help bind everything. Let's get this 
speed card out of the way. There we go. And wrap that a few tight wraps. There's not going to be any tension or anything on this, so you don't need to tie it all the way down. And then you fold it around and wrap the other end. down the shank, add a little bit of resin to that as well. This is probably the most complicated part of this fly, is getting the weed card and the and the wrap card in place and I always go underneath the wrap card with a few few wraps just to make sure it won't go down the bend too much or too far. And that is the wrap card and that sits there. Now I'm tying these for largemouth yellowfish so the kind of combinations that we tie on only black or, or olive or um, I, I'm, this I'm going to specific one I'm going to tie in a natural hairs here and with that I like to to use a gold crystal flash Gold works quite well for largemouth yellowfish. So I take two strands, fold it double, and tie them on top of the hook, just past that wrap guard. Like that, just two wraps is two wraps are fine to hold it there for the time being. And you cut the loops and fold those ends over, tie them the same length. Remember this is not a dry fly, it's, it's, it can be a little bit rough. Tie that in and now you've got four loops, cut those loops and fold those over and then you've got a nice flash tail and you trap everything right there. And to finish the tail, we're going to tie in a piece of Zonka strip, and this is natural hairs here. Now what I do is with the different sizes, when I tie a, um, when I tie a size 10, I'll make the tail 25 millimeters, about an inch. When I tie a bigger one, like a size 8 or, or 6, then I go to a 30 millimeter tail skin length on the I measure the, the the rabbit skin and that you put on top of that flash right there at the back and you trap that with a few wraps secure that and that is the tail and to do the body we're going to use a cross cut Zonka strip and that we what I do is same color you can combine colors you can use different colors I use a barred uh, uh, Zonka strip for the tail um, to do the body we're going to do exactly the same now again if you are a right hand tire you'll see that hair is lying down the that it's not in line with a with a with a skin part. So if you're right hand tire, tie the end in, you're gonna tie it in upside down, but tie the end in where the hair points away from you. Because when you tie, when you wrap it, you're gonna fold it over. So when you're left hand tire, you tie the other end in. So remember again, when you when you're right hand tire, tie the end in upside down and the hair points away from you. And that will wrap the right way and you'll have the right finish on this on this fly. So again you're gonna just gonna tie that back end in. Just that back end, tie that on top of the tail, tie it in nice and tight and run the thread forward. Do there. Now at this, this point again I add a little bit of uh, glue or resin on the shank 
just to, to bind that. Just like that. You don't need, need much. And now when you take the, the cross cut and you wrap away from you, it's going to turn the right way around. And you're going to, all the hair will be pointing backwards now. And you keep wrapping that forward. to the cone and you'll see it forms it creates a very nice abdomen and this fly has got a lot of um, movement in the in the body when you retrieve that even when you retrieve it very slow you'll see there's a lot of movement and you're going to stop behind the bead where you can still have enough space to tie some more material in in front of between the bead and the hair. Now I take a needle and I separate the, the, the hair a little bit because you need to get the thread through there. Secure that with two or three wraps and you cut the excess away. And make sure you tie that in nicely. Now you can see the the body, the abdomen of this fly forms a nice, very nice little abdomen. And the next thing is to measure the weed guard. Now, you want the weed guard just to go past the hook point. You don't want it to the hook point to stick past the weed guard like that. You want the weed guard to cover that hook point like that. And you need to measure that and cut that the right length. So once that's done you cut that. Always rather cut it too long than too short. That's fine and then what I do is I take a lighter and I burn the end a little bit and squeeze it flat and that just helps to to get a helps the thread to get a better grip and won't slide out. And you stick that under the in underneath the cone, the bottom of the hook of the, the hook uh, shank, and you wrap that with a few tight wraps. Just get that in the right position there. Tie that all the way to the thread, to the to the zonka strip abdomen that you tied. You leave that right there. Now the next step is the. It's quite an uh, well, quite a important one. Let's to get to finish it off with a. Um, with the abdomen or the with, the with the collar and what I do again is I take about 35 mils of cross cut zonka strip and cut about 35 mils off a zonka strip and I prepare these beforehand um, I cut pre-cut the tails I pre-cut the 
these pieces of crosscut zonker for um, for the collar so that they know that they, everything is right you don't have to measure anything afterwards when you start tying you can just just do everything also brush it out I've got one of these little little brushes that that I brush these things out with uh, and and it just my fluffs the the zonker strip up a bit takes a lot of that fine fluff that you don't want in the zonker strip take some of that out and then you put it in a clamp I use a one of Marc Petitjean's clamps one of his magic tools put it in there take your hair scissors and cut the Yeah, so you've only got the hair in there. Put that aside. I'm going to make a loop with a thread. Secure that loop with a few wraps and grab your dubbing twister. Now I use one of these uh, CNF dubbing twisters. I've used many different dubbing twisters and you can use any dubbing twister but I must say these CNF dubbing twisters works like a charm. There is also a video on um, on the uh, uh, brushes with zonka strips that I'll link and you can go and have a look at that in more detail but you put the thread in the loop and you all the, the, the zonka strip hair in the loop rabbit hair and you twist that twister to wind everything up and form a nice little brush grab your knuckle pliers cut the dubbing twister away now you're going to wrap that brush around the hook to create the collar and you're going to do two or three wraps and that length length of the zonka strip about 30 mil is enough to finish the collar you pull that in behind the bead make sure you pull all that material in behind the bead you don't want it to break let's grab it there I'll be able to tie that off I'm just going to grab that with the hackle pliers again there we go and you tie all your thread wraps in behind the bead make sure you pull them in behind the bead then they're not visible and push that bead back a little bit just to compact that material a little bit more and wrap that or trap that with a few thread wraps and then you can cut that loop away and this is the largey leech you can I mean, you can tie it in so many different color combinations uh, the hair in the front the, the zonka strip that's tied into the brush in the front is pointing sort of away from the hook and not down the the, the, the rest of the body of the fly but don't worry about this when, when the fly gets wet everything will fold nicely into place and it will form a very nice leech pattern and uh, which you can use like I said for for so many different uh, different fly, uh, species we use them for largemouth yellowfish bass smallmouth and largemouth bass any predatory kind of kind of species and uh, definitely an easy fly to tie definitely worth tying a few have them in the box when you go fish the Vol River for largemouth yellowfish and uh, something that you can try out uh, please like the video please subscribe to the channel please share it and please comment on it if you if you have any comments or any other ideas on this fly thanks for watching